Hello everyone, this is Bertina Amy here and welcome to my channel. I am very excited to be a part of this Christmas collaboration hosted by Claire's Crafty Corner. For this collaboration video, I am doing 10 Dollar Tree Christmas decor DIYs. To start off, I thought I'd show you how I made this cute stitch ornament. So today's video was actually filmed a year ago, but I never got around to finalizing the editing process to be able to post sooner. So here we are going over the very first video I ever created, which is this DIY toy stitch cloche type of ornament. The stitch can be found in the toy section of the Dollar Tree and you can easily find these DIY ornaments in the Christmas section. So the first thing I do is I take this marker, it doesn't matter what kind, and I just use it to try to trace around the bottom part of the opening of this cloche ornament and I try to press into this thick foam I had around for a previous project and it turns out I really didn't even need the marker so you can skip that but just make an indentation into the foam and cut around it with scissors. If you had used white foam instead of black like I did then you can skip this step but I didn't have thick white foam so instead I cut out some white felt to match the black foam I cut out and glued the white felt to the black foam so that way it looks like they're standing on white snow. Then I glued the foam piece into the lid of this cloche DIY ornament which they call the jar one in Dollar Tree and I'm careful to make sure that there's enough of a gap so that I could actually close the actual ornament once it's finished. So it looks like I did not record this other part but basically I created sort of a red and white Christmassy Santa type hat to cover up the metal part of the top part of this cloche ornament but I do have the part where I'm actually wrapping the white fuzzy part of the hat and gluing it with hot glue around the top part of this globe and I just did not like the metal look it just looks so cheapy to me so I decided to cover it up with making it look like there's a hat on top of this globe so to speak and I just hot glue it on and make sure to string through I decided to use pipe cleaners for mine because I thought that would be more sturdy than string and I, I, I like that for hanging on to a tree so you know just feel free to use whatever you prefer. I bought this I think it was a 12 pack of mini Christmas hats for projects like this and I wanted to give Stitch a mini Christmas hat so I go ahead and trim it down because they're really long but I trim it down to be closer to his size and I glue it onto his head and I think that looks really cute. You could leave it straight up but you could also glue it to the side or to the back. I decided to glue it to the side off camera after the fact. Then I took some faux snow. They have two different kinds last year at least and as w there was the ones that look like little round balls and the ones that look more flaky and I chose the flaky kind and I just poured in enough to just put a layer into the lid or into the glass or the, the globey type part that so that way I knew it would cover up any of the black sides of that foam that I had and then I just closed it with the lid on top and then I shook it up so that it would just get all over the place inside the globe. And for the pipe cleaner I feel like the Dollar Tree pipe cleaners are really thin so I decided to double it up by bending it in half because you don't need more than that length anyways and then twisting it upon itself and then putting it through the loop of the cloche ornament and then just pinching it towards the top and then twisting it so that you have a whole loop to hang from. For this next DIY toy cloche ornament we are doing the combination of Wally and Eve from the movie Wally. And I just went to the toy section again and picked out the toy pieces to basically disassemble. <laughs> but I basically start out first with the cloche piece and cut out another circle black foam piece. But instead of using the white felt that I had on hand, I actually had this nice gray felt that kind of makes you think of like gravel. And it made me think that it matched very well with the Wally -E scheme of the whole beginning part of the story. So I decided to use that instead of the white felt. And that way it looks like he's in on the ground and whatnot. For Eve, you could actually 
pull the blue stand back and forth and it'll eventually come right off but then there'll still be the little bit of like this blue tubing left just below her so I just take a craft knife and just keep cutting through it until it comes completely off and I'm clear of any of that blue stuff. Unfortunately, it's not the same for Wally. That stuff, I'm worried about tearing up the tires or tracks underneath him. So I decide to wrap that up with some more of that gray felt that I have so that it blends in better. But it's not without serious hassle and trial and error. And it just didn't work out with so much time spent trying to fix that problem. But the next challenge for this project was trying to get Eve to look like she's floating or gliding as opposed to actually sitting on the ground. So I decided to basically poke a hole on top of her head and making it thicker and thicker to fit fit this clear stem, so to speak. I don't remember what it's called. I'll try to get back to you on that. But I tried hot glue. Hot glue is not the solution for this project. Definitely want stronger glue. So I use this pro glue that you'll see on the screen. And I use that to try to get the piece to permanently adhere to the top of her head and then I'll string it through the top of the actual ornament so that it looks like she's gliding if that makes sense. So as you can see I even tried to use a screw to try to enlarge the opening at the top of her head and to squeeze the clear wire is what it's called and and I let it sit overnight to dry and then I move on to Wally. So the stand that Wally is on is just really attached to his wheels and I'm afraid to take the wheels off or tear them and make it not look right or look good. So eventually I scrapped the idea of going ahead and trying to cut them off with the craft knife. So instead I decided to wrap them with some more of that gray felt that I have in excess of thankfully. And then here you can see that I'm taking the red sort of felt kind of that hat material that you typically see for Christmas time and I'm just attaching it to that sort of thin tin covering for where the loop is at the top. I don't know what it's called. If you know what it is, please let me know in the comments below. But basically, I want to cover it up because that sort of tin looking thing is just so flimsy and cheapy looking that I want to cover it up to make it look like there's a hat at the top of this globe. So here I'm just testing out how I'm going to attach this clear wire to the top of the hat and hide it. And I'm just working through how high I want it up and things like that. Then once I'm happy with the placement, I go ahead and glue the clear wire to the top of the hat and then wrap the hat once more with some more of that green, excuse me, red material to cover up and help adhere and keep the clear wire in place. And it actually bulks up the hat even more, which doesn't even phase me in or bother me in any sort of way but then I finally take the white fluffy stuff and go ahead and attach that to the top of the globe then I close the globe and I turn my attention to Wally so with Wally I just go ahead and take the gray felt and I just make sure to cover up any visible blue plastic that I see and I know the very bottom is going to be covered up because it's going to be glued directly onto the piece that's already glued into the lid of the globe piece, if that makes sense. So I just go ahead and cover up the edges and the top parts of the blue piece. And I do the best I can to try to make it fit as perfectly as I can so that nothing else is visible uh, as far as the blue plastic is concerned. Once I'm satisfied with that, I take off the tag and then I take out the snowflakes that I selected, pour a little bit into the sort of glass piece of the globe thing and put in just a little bit just so it looks like it's snowing when I shake it and I then put the lid on and that's how I made that one. In this next project, I thought I would start by showing you how I made this DIY penguin cloche 
Christmas ornament. Now the cloche piece is actually the jar ornament from Dollar Tree and I picked up a pack of these wooden ball beads at about an inch and three quarters and these wooden spools that are about an inch as well and I decided to take one of each and glue one ball bead on top of the wooden spool. Then I take some white felt, I cut out a long one inch strip and I glue that in the middle section of the wooden spool and once I come to the end I clip it off and try to smooth it out and glue it in so that it looks like it's practically seamless. Then I take a long black vinyl one inch strip and I glue it until I only show like maybe a small section, almost like a midsection of what I'm gonna consider the front of this penguin. And it might be best that you paint the head part of the penguin black first. I decided to do it after the fact because I wanted to glue these pieces on first. Not ideal necessarily because you could get the white part of the felt actually black by accident, but if you're careful, you'll be okay too if you decide to follow exactly as I did it. But I'm just gonna paint the had ball bead black only. While that's drying, I take the lid, remove it from the cloche piece, and I press the cloche piece into this thick foam that I have lying around. Then I cut the circle out going on the inside of the lines and then I do the same thing with white felt, making sure that the white felt circle matches the black foam piece and then glue those pieces together. Then I glue that inside the lid and I make sure that it's as centered as possible so that I can actually screw the jar back into the lid. Next I take blue googly eyes and I attach it to my penguin and I make sure to have it be in the front part where the white belly area is and I just put it on the, white, uh, the black ball bead and I just space it where I think it looks good. Then I take some additional black vinyl, I cut them into triangles and then I fold them and then I see if they are matching and so I adjust them as necessary with scissors and then I put them up to the penguin and see if it's the right size or not and I adjust as necessary and I curve the edges so that they are not so pointy. Then when I'm happy with the size, I go ahead and glue them down so that either side of the penguin's wings will actually look the same. Then I attach each piece to where I want it on the penguin and hold it down with the hot glue until it cools. So I work on the Christmas hat and I bought a pack of these. I think they're in a pack of 12 from Amazon. And if you don't see a link down below, feel free to remind me, but I go ahead and trim it off because I don't want it that long. And then I cut off the white fur part of that same hat and I repurpose it and attach it to the edge of the newly made miniature hat. And I also glued in the edge of the red part of the hat in first so that it would allow the hat to sit more comfortably on the penguin's head so it wasn't so large and then I put the white fur over top of that and then I glue that entire thing onto the penguin's head. The remaining red part of the longer part of the hat I decide or wider part should I say I decide to use that and glue that over the thin silver metal that's at the top of the ornament and I just want to cover it up because I think it doesn't look very good so I cover it up with this red felt and I just glue it on to the best of my ability and then I add white faux fur from one of those large Dollar Tree either Christmas stockings or Christmas hats and I just use the faux fur from that because I think that looks better than the ones from these miniature hats anyways and I really like the way that that looks. And I'm sure you'll notice that there's nothing perfect about this project. It's just that I like the way it turned out regardless of its imperfections and when you're doing a craft make sure you're kind to yourself and realize realize that there's no such thing as perfection in projects like this. So be kind to yourself and be kind to others when they're making stuff. So here I actually go ahead and glue on the hat to the penguin's head. I had some extra long faux fur from the hats earlier and so I decided to repurpose the rest and I glue it upon itself so that it looks thicker and I then wrap it around the penguin's neck and then I glue it to the back and adjust the size as necessary, like trim off any excess that doesn't belong. 
beak. Next, I work on the beak and I decide to take a small little triangle of the thick black foam and I decide to cut it down to size, comparing it to the face and seeing how big I actually need it. And once I get to the size that I want, then I turn it sideways because it's pretty thick and I just cut a little slit into it so it looks like it's an open beak. And then I didn't have any orange paint on hand at the time, so I had this pack of puffy paint and I pulled out the orange and I used that to squirt a little bit on some scrap felt and then I just painted the beak with with the orange puffy paint. Now I just glued the flat side down to the felt as well. While that stuff dries, I take a pipe cleaner from Dollar Tree, I bend it in half, twist it upon itself to make it more sturdy, and put it through the loop at the top of the cloche DIY ornament from Dollar Tree, and I twist the very top so that it could hang. I then take the white felt and cover up the entire outside of the gray lid because I don't like the way that looks and I just glue it on and trim off the excess. Off camera I actually glued the feet and the feet is basically just the white felt that had the orange puffy paint that I cut into like half circles and then cut that in half and then glued them to the bottom of the penguin. And then I add more puffy paint, paint to the feet while it's already glued on. Then taking a white piece of felt, I also cut out about a one inch strip, kind of long strip, and I glue that around the edge of the gray lid, and then I trim off any excess and try to like glue in whatever, could still use some glue. And lastly, I glue on the beak, then I grab some faux snow from the Dollar Tree, put it inside the DIY Dollar Tree jar slash cloche type ornament and close the lid and there is your DIY Dollar Tree penguin ornament. In this next DIY Dollar Tree ornament, I'm showing you how I made this enchanted rose ornament using only Dollar Tree products. I start off by taking my Dollar Tree DIY ornament and removing the lid and removing the tag and painting the lid and the top part of the ornament that's metal or aluminum rather and painting all of that gold. While that's drying I look through my stash of saved items and I had this faux floral eucalyptus lying around and I decided to use a part of its branch that didn't have any leaves and I thought the size of it was actually quite perfect. I decided to take it off with clippers and then I had to end up cutting it down because it was actually longer than I really needed for this cloche project idea. So I took all the roses out of their package and I decided to look through them very thoroughly to find one that has the most open looking bloom of a rose and I took the other ones that looked less pretty or more closed and I decided to peel off individual petals. Then I took this red paint from Apple Barrel and I blended it with a little bit of black chalk paint and a real small amount of purple which unfortunately I did not show on screen. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to know the exact shade but really I couldn't tell if it made that much of a difference. It was so little of it anyways. But I was trying to create basically my very own burgundy shade because I didn't like the shade of red that these roses came in. They were just too stark. Well, not even stark red. They're more like sort of faded red. Not a very pretty color in my opinion. So once I got the shade that I wanted, I went ahead and painted the entire rose that I chose for this project and the petals I peeled off as well. Once dry, I flip over the petals and paint the other side too. Now if you're wondering, this project did take me a couple of days to complete because I hadn't fully made decisions on various aspects of this project, but I did end up wanting to preserve the mixed paint that I created. So believe it or not, this might seem strange, but I decided to use one of the spare cloche ornaments from Dollar Tree and use that as a way to preserve the paint by sticking my mini Dixie cup inside of it as I used that for mixing my paints to begin with. But I was able to squeeze it in into this DIY Dollar Tree cloche ornament just for a temporary preservation of the paint, if that makes sense. 
Then I took the gold paint and I just basically poured it over the top of the outside part of the lid because I wanted it completely covered and I was just gonna let it dry overnight because I would need it to dry that long anyways since it would be a really thick amount of paint. I do go ahead and use a brush though to help it get over to the edges and I do paint hand paint the actual edges as well to make sure it doesn't look gray in some spots. Apologies for the temporary warm lighting. I accidentally hit the button and didn't realize I was recording it with that warm setting so I switch it shortly after. But I have this hanging wire that's clear and I use that to help attach to a single painted burgundy leaf or petal rather and I am going to use that to have it suspended in the air at all times. And the remaining petals will end up being free flowing. And then I finally glue on the rose onto the stem. I actually recommend that you do this part right after the rose is totally dry and then make sure before you glue it into the lid that you check to make sure it's not too tall because mine was and I had to fix it again. Now a heads up, gluing the stem onto the lid is going to take some time to figure out. I ended up having to do it a couple of times because the first time I had to shorten the stem to begin with, but the second time I had to build up the sort of like, almost like building a root for the stem to sit flat or stay still. Um, and then letting the glue to dry before adding paint over top because unfortunately this hot glue stuff isn't going to dry clear. And even if it did, I think it's still going to be obvious anyway, so I do end up painting over the hot glue once dry. Alternatively, you could also pick up some gold glitter foam or just gold foam in general and cut out a circle like I've done in the previous video and stick that in there and actually the stem would probably stick in that even better. I just wanted to use what I had lying around, so I went with the gold paint instead. And if you're doing what I'm doing and you're pouring paint like I did, make sure the very edges where you're going to close the jar completely, make sure it's got the least amount of paint because you don't want that to prevent you from being able to close this ornament. Now if you want a petal suspended in mid-air, then I would try to stick the clear hanging wire using a pair of pliers so you could stick it through the small little opening at the top of the ornament. I did bend the end of the hanging wire so that I could stick it through but also have it hanging over the top of the ornament as well. Then hot glue that little opening closed and hot glue the little piece hanging over the top as down to the aluminum covering, if that makes sense. Then I paint over the top of the covering as well again to cover up the little bit of hot glue that's now showing. You can also attach some already painted burgundy petals over top to cover up the imperfections because the hot glue is going to be noticeable at the top and I decided to do this after videoing this project. Once you've completed any and all touch-ups and everything is dry, you can go ahead and assemble everything permanently. If you want, I go ahead and stick the remaining petals back in that are dry and I add a pipe cleaner, fold it in half, twist it upon itself, stick it through the loop at the top, and just bring the ends together, twist it at the top, and that's the end of this project. In this next project, I decided to create this Santa Gnome ornament. And oh my god, I'm so excited because at the Dollar Tree, my last visit, I saw that they sold these Creatology packs of fur. So of course, I had to buy a pack. You're going to need a wooden ornament and wooden beads. So last year I did a tester on these uh, DIY gnome ornaments for Christmas and I chose a smaller bead from the Dollar Tree and I felt like that nose was just way too small. So I recommend getting these, they're about like an inch round ball beads. So if you don't have this exact wooden ornament, you can always create your own template to create the beard bottom part of the ornament and that'll work just fine as well. But basically when you're cutting out the beard part of the fur, make sure you cut the back part of the fur and be careful not to cut with scissors because it's just going to give you straight lines. It's not going to look as good. I basically just traced mine, then took this roller cutter from the Dollar Tree and that's the only sharp craft tool that I had. 
so that's what I used to cut mine out with. I decided to do two of these. I don't know why I didn't want the back just to be plain wood. You don't have to do that part, you could skip that if you want, because in other projects I don't necessarily do the back either. Once I finish gluing the beards on, on both sides, then I try to fix the beards so that they look nice. And then I take the round ball bead and then I glue that to the top of the beard, only one side. Then I had purchased this red stocking from Dollar Tree and I thought I would use the remaining fabric to help create the hat for this gnome. And I knew I wanted a pretty big hat. I had these packs of mini hats, but I didn't feel like it would look good with this gnome, so I wanted a bigger hat for this one, so I decided to create my own. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it, cutting basically like a, a triangle going up and gluing one edge, to, or the edges together that are open, and then I'm taking some extra white faux fur from the stocking and then creating the brim of the hat. So as I try to make this hat, I actually made mine just a little too small, so I used the brim to try to be a little looser with, so that that way it'll fit over the gnome's beard and nose, so that that way nothing can be seen as far as the original wooden ornament. So trim off the excess and then it's time to fit the hat to the gnome and it should give you a little extra leeway with the brim to be able to make sure it fits fine. And once you are satisfied with the placement, go ahead and add glue to the back of the gnome and then make sure to put glue surrounding the hat to cover around the nose as well. And keep in mind, my project didn't turn out perfect and don't expect yours to turn out perfect either. As long as you like the way it turns out, that's all that really matters. So I spent a lot of time trying to scrunch up this hat to make it look nice because I've seen a lot of gnomes in general in images and things like that where it appeared as though their hats are kind of folded and things like that and that's the kind of look I was trying to achieve. I don't know that I did it that well but I kept going with it because I was trying to encourage others to think outside the box or maybe try to be creative or try to do something more than just ordinary if that makes any sense. I mean there's certainly nothing wrong with not adding the folds in. It can still look cute without it or you could do something as simple as just taking the top of the hat, folding it downwards and having the ball part, the white fuzzy ball part be attached to the front part of the hat if that makes sense. There's ways around um, being able to make something look nice without all the extra effort too. And because I didn't have the fuzzy ball part for the hat, I went ahead and made my own using yarn. I have this yarn on hand, but I'm sure you could find white yarn at the Dollar Tree as well. And I'm just making a pom-pom ball. So my pom-pom ball didn't turn out perfect by any means, but once I got to the shape that I was satisfied with, I went ahead and just attached it to the hat. Then I had some green twine, probably from the Dollar Tree, I've had it for a while, and I just used that to wrap around the hat and use that as the hanger. And then off camera, I actually decided after all to like glue the pom pom just covering what I felt were mistakes of the red hat. And I think that actually will look cuter and it'll actually allow it to hang better easily instead of being all kind of floppy. I hope that makes sense. But let me know in the comments below what you think of this project. So for this next project, I'm showing you how I made this DIY Dollar Tree Santa Grinch Gnome. So you basically need the same supplies as you did for the Santa Gnome, but this one will require a sickly green fur. I was able to find this one from Amazon, a small little patch of fur, and I'm using that for this project. So I'm starting out the same way, taking the wooden ornament and using the bottom half to trace the size and shape of what I would need for the beard for the Grinch Gnome ornament. I also had this pack of mini hats that I'm going to be using for the gnome, the Grinch Gnome for this project as well. So I take some spring green acrylic paint and some white paint and a little bit of black chalk paint 
to try to create my own sickly green paint color for the nose. The, the paint color does not need to exactly match the fur, because think about it, your hair doesn't necessarily match your skin tone either, so it doesn't have to be exact. Alternatively, if you have something else you'd like to use for the sickly green color, I've seen people use that sort of sparkling green that sort of looks, I would call it like minty, or maybe sort of, I don't know what to call it. Uh, let me know if you know what that is in the comments below, but basically, there's the sky's the limit, you can choose what colors you'd like to use for this project. But I go ahead and mix mine, and then I paint the ball bead and let it dry so I can move on to the next part of the project. So while the nose is drying, I go ahead and take the ornament and the fur, and I trace out the bearded shape, and then I cut it out at the back of the fur, and then I take the fur and glue it onto the wooden ornament. With the extra ball bead, I try to place it where I think I'm going to have the nose for the Grinch gnome. So I try to spread apart the, fa the fur so that I can make space for the nose. And I do the best I can here. It's not going to be perfect, but it turns out alright, I think. Let me know what you think. But basically, um, I just make space for it and see where I'm going to place it once the nose is ready to go. I go ahead and glue the back of the hat to the back of the ornament. If you would prefer to make the entire project all Dollar Tree items, you certainly can get yarn instead if you don't find the right shade of fur. And you can make your own fur using yarn. Or pretend the yarn is the hair or whatever, because that could work too. And I was able to find um, a pack of this sickly green color of fur from the Dollar Tree, and this other pack of yarn sickly green color from Amazon as well. Both of them are good options and are definitely much cheaper than just the small little square of sickly green fur. I decided to rummage through my supplies and I was looking through and found some glitter that I had bought years ago from Dollar Tree and I knew in the pack it came with some kind of metallic lime green type of um, glitter and I thought oh my gosh that would be perfect for the gnome's nose, I didn't end up covering it completely with the all the glitter because I didn't want it to be overwhelming. I just was kind of give you guys some ideas or something like that in case you wanted to do this. I don't know that they still sell this glitter, but you probably could find it anywhere else. Um, or you could maybe look for a similar shade in a sort of lime green, or maybe the word is army green, um, sort of metallic color that can maybe work for the sickly green gnome nose. So once the nose is totally dry, go ahead and take it and glue it into the spot right under or below rather the hat and right where the sort of mustache I've kind of created is right in the middle. And then I glue the hat surrounding it as best as I can. Lastly, I take my scissors, I snip either side of the hat and I string through using a paper clip to twine into the little holes I just created. What do you guys think? In this project, I thought I'd show you how I made this DIY Grinch ornament. The first thing I do is I take my GYS alcohol-based marker and I color the entire thing this sickly green color. I go ahead and do both sides. Then I freehand drew the face, the Grinch's face, onto the ornament. And if this is something you're not comfortable with, what you could do is you could print out a picture or a copy of his face and you could trace it onto the ornament itself. What you could do is you could color the backside with pencil completely and use that as like a carbon, to make a carbon copy onto the ornament itself. Next I take my black alcohol marker 120 and I use that to outline the facial features. I didn't do this part in pencil but I go around with my black marker and I give his cheeks a sort of furry look by copying kind of what it looks like in the image. You don't have to do this part, you could try to do this if you'd like, it's totally up to you. Next I go ahead and take my white gel marker and color in his eyes white. I chose to color it white because I felt like that would stand out better than the bright yellow color that his eyes usually are. It's totally up to you if you want to color it in yellow, you certainly can do that with your alcohol markers. Next is the fun part. I take this mini red hat from Amazon. It came in a pack of, I think it was 12, 
and I'm going to just glue it and attach it where I like on the Grinch's head. You can skip this part, but I really think this makes the character come to life. And just like in the image, I'm going to glue the top part of the hat to the left side of the Grinch's face. Then I go ahead and glue the white fur to itself to help secure the hat even better. Then I take a piece of twine, fold it in half, and make a knot at the ends, and then I string it through the opening between the hat where it kind of loops over, where it's like kind of like there's almost like a hole. I can't really explain that. I hope I'm making sense, but basically I string it through and I stick the knotted end through the loop of the other end of the twine and then I pull it straight through and then you'll have like a loop to hang it onto your Christmas tree. And that's how I made this DIY Grinch ornament. Let me know what you think in the comments below. In this next project, I show you how I made these DIY decoupage ornaments. I first start out by taking some scrap tissue paper and tearing it down to smaller pieces and then mod podging it to the front and the back. When you're doing a project like this, I highly recommend that you select two colors for your decoupage ornament so that you can see both of those through. If you try to do more than that, it might become some of the other, one of the other colors might become like more in the background and you might not see it as much, but I decided on two. So I started out with using this leftover burgundy color that I created for from a previous project. And of course, you're going to want to paint the front and the back of your ornament as well. Then once dry, take your secondary color and kind of dip it into some water first and dip into the color that you're going to use so that it's more of a highlight. I decided to go with gold and I really like the results of that. Once dry, I take some long green twine, I think it's from the Dollar Tree, and I string it through the remaining part of the ornament and I kind of sort of go around it by tying it on there over and over and over again. I hope that makes sense. But basically you put um, the string through and then you kind of tie it on there and then you keep going around and around and around until you get to the very end. I hope that makes sense. I try to tie the knot to be as close to the piece of wood as possible and it ends up coming out with like this sort of edge to it, I guess you call it. Um, and that's just what I decided to do for mine. You don't have to use twine, you can use string or you can just paint it all together. It's totally up to you. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I really love texture into my creations and so I really like the addition of the twine personally. So once you've made knots all the way around the entire edge of the top of the ornament, then what I try to do at least to try to cover up any wood part is I try to go around the front and back so that that way it covers up the wood as well there. And I just do the best that I can. And after that, the project is complete. Let me know what you think of this one in the comments below. And here I show you how I did one that was a base color of blue with a silver top out over top. Let me know what you think in the comments below. In this next project, so I decided to try to do a DIY Dollar Tree Winter Wonderland wreath. I really wanted a wreath that could last throughout the entirety of winter. So I decided to run to Dollar Tree and grab this wreath base. This one is an 18 inch one. And then I grabbed the colors that appeal to me, particularly this year anyways. And so I saw these what looked like cool gray deco mesh things. Uh, I got two rolls of those and then a roll of tool and a roll of ribbon with sparkling snowflakes. And honestly, that ribbon really reminded me a lot of tool, even though I knew it technically wasn't. So if you've seen my Halloween wreath, DIY wreath video from Dollar Tree, I actually followed the same concept ideas. And I started just creating the lengths that I wanted to create my sort of like, I'm going to call them sort of like bows that I would then twist on the pipe cleaners to the wreath form or to the deco mesh or ribbon that I was going to tie on there anyways. I did my best to try to disperse things as evenly as possible, but 
as unfortunately for my luck and the I guess lack of ribbon and or deco mesh that I picked up initially it felt like the resulting wreath felt kind of sparse however I already had plans to add florals from Dollar Tree to add to the look I also picked up some rolls of the white deco mesh and the plan is to take them cut them up and then take pipe cleaners to attach them to the outside edge, kind of giving a hint of some white. And I know on screen too that the other deco mesh kind of comes off looking silver, but I really am just attracted to this color. As I was trying to attach the white deco mesh, I also tried to push them all in one direction so that it kind of doubles up the appearance of the hint of the white snow flaky looking type of deco mesh if you will. I'm calling it snow flaky just because of the appearance of deco mesh in general. So here now that the deco mesh and the tool and the ribbon are all attached I go ahead and take my white floral stems from the Dollar Tree pull them off and just start placing them where I think it looks good and then once I'm satisfied I go ahead and hot glue them on. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Once those were already attached, I suddenly realized I never added this Dollar Tree tubing and so I cut it down to size and made clusters of them. And then I realized I still had this tool that looked sparkly like snow, like little dots of snow and I cut that up and put that into the areas I felt were sparse. I really like the way that this turned out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. So I ordered these really pretty silver and blue floral pieces from Timu and decided to add those along with my white floral pieces onto my DIY Dollar Tree Winter Wonderland wreath. And this is how it looks on my door. I think this turned out really pretty. Let me know what you think in the comments below. In this next project, I thought I would show you how I made this DIY Dollar Tree Winter Wonderland centerpiece. This video is initially inspired by my DIY Dollar Tree Meets Timu Winter Wonderland wreath. It is also inspired by my DIY Dollar Tree Halloween wreath and centerpiece, so I thought I would do one for Christmas. So I picked up this green floral foam from the Dollar Tree and I grabbed these white floral picks from the Dollar Tree as well. And I also got these beautiful sparkling blue floral pieces from Timu. They came 12 in a pack so I had more than enough to cover this entire thing. So I decided to just kind of play around with it and see what kind of arrangement I would like and decided on a similar pattern to the one I made for Halloween. So I just decided to alternate the white with the blue and the very top because the blue is so pretty I decided to try to combine all of them into one big floral stem to be at the top. And once I liked my arrangement I just decided to hot glue it all down. You'll notice that I pulled apart the pieces for the white floral stems from Timu. It's because that they were so large that it felt like it wouldn't fit this green floral foam. So those extra pieces I decided to put back into this DIY Dollar Tree photo frame box I created as a centerpiece. Also, I don't know about how everyone else might do their own floral arrangements with these floral foam pieces but I absolutely do not like the texture feeling and I feel like it gets crummy when you're touching it with your skin it's almost like it just kind of fo like falls apart in a sense like not totally but it just kind of I don't know I just never been a fan of it so I decided to keep the plastic on and then go ahead and hot glue my floral stems into place. I'll try to remember to include the link from Timu for these floral stems. They have other colors. The red one is also really gorgeous if you prefer red for your floral arrangements. So like in my Halloween DIY centerpiece, I actually added those fairy lights surrounding it and with this one I really didn't feel like it needed it so I opted against it but you certainly can also add them around your floral arrangement before setting it inside of the clear case for your centerpiece. I absolutely love how this turned out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe for more, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.
Bye.